to actually get that momentum going and get into the habit and gain some experience with what it's like to look at something in your life and either eliminate it, upgrade it, or replace it with a design that better suits the, the expression of your calling. Um, use a physical example, like actually physically go through your house and just look at each object, like in your house, every single little object. Say, does this make any sense? Like, is this, what's the intention behind this? Make everything intentional. And this will give you a little bit of a, a tangible practice, but then you can move on to, you know, some of your relationships or some of the dialogues in your relationships or whatever business or career you're working on. Sometimes I think it's helpful for people to start with something really tangible. Just look at an object wow. because the process is the same. You're comparing it to your calling, if you will. You're just holding it in contrast to the light of what lights you up and you see does it make sense for this to be in my house or not and where and then you start seeing you start getting these little intuitive psychic glimpses of the past like when you bought it where you bought it why you bought it who you were when you bought it what the intention behind it was what the unconsciousness behind it was and then you can sort of start clearing out your house in that way and then you can extend that into the more abstract or non-physical elements of your life if you will someone that's really aware and confident in the independence that they have because their fulfillment comes from the state of being being connected to their calling and they know they could if they had to express it in any condition whether they're sleeping on the floor or in a five-star mansion whether they have a paycheck or a lot of money or no money whatsoever once you realize that the only bodies that really matter to fulfill your calling in this world is the mental and physical body and so and you have these and so you're free when you realize that you can allow them, first of all, to become a crystallization, an expression of your calling more fully, fully saturated with an awareness of that state of being that's never dependent on other bodies, right? That's the first freedom as, as an entity, as a, as a body. It doesn't have to be a certain way. You just flow with the moment and you believe anything's possible. And if people come together with that intention, truly magical things happen. And all the reliances that you thought were helpful, they were actually anchors holding you back. It's a pretty clear indication the more flexible you become. It doesn't matter that at a certain age or in a certain stage or phase of your life, you may not suddenly feel like, oh, actually, you know what feels conducive is for me to settle down for six months, stay in one location and not travel, you know, or move to this apartment and just stay there for a long period of time or be in a single relationship for a long period of time. So you may have a phase where that feels to be a more conducive environment for your calling. But it's not the same as an attachment. You're, you're still intuitively generating that, and it's still from a state of flexibility. And if the next day it turns out to not be the case, you're not in a funk about it. Because your calling is not identified with the means you have chosen to express yourself through. You always keep that quote-unquote separation between what you really are, slash your calling, and your circumstances. Always see how independent your state of being is. You don't need anything. If there's a confusion regarding, okay, how I'm going to monetize my calling, then e either you haven't really found your calling yet, or you're just not really that connected to it right now. Because if you are connected to it, you're not, you, you don't care where you live next month. And so you don't care about how you'll get the money to live there next month, because you have no clue what next month is going to be like. Right? The more you, the more you become an expression of your calling, your body is your first vehicle, right? Your mind and body are the first avenues that house the calling. And so those need to be addressed first. Now, after years of practicing that, these bodies, these avenues will become so fine-tuned to the calling that you are able to not need these bodies to be dependent on other bodies oh. of work, right? So you can take these bodies, those are your first rights to freedom, if you will. You can take these anywhere at any time and you see that you can always express your calling into this world through these vehicles that are part of this world. So it doesn't matter where you go, where you are, you become less and less attached to having to be in the same place necessarily or with the same person here or there or with the same plan for the future. And this is a gradual process. Don't force yourself to go all out because there may be some backlash, which also you could address and deal with. It's not a big deal ultimately, but take it at your own pace, but do experiment. What are you currently holding on to and projecting into the future? How far are you projecting into the future? And in most cases, you'll see that the people that are most, most connected to their calling, 
they're, they have the least of an idea what's going to happen next month or next year. Truly being turned on by your calling versus sort of knowing about it, but still like, where am I going to lift next month? And so then your intention is not truly to lift from the calling moment to moment. And again, the calling is never a goal. It's always here now. It's always where you're coming from. So if sometimes in architecture of a lot of money, it's actually not conducive to always check in where you come from, right? Sometimes no money or no promise of money is a great architecture to always remind yourself where you're coming from and actually generate happiness there. So if, you, if that's not something you'd be willing to at least consider, I'm not saying you have to do it, it may not be aligned for every life, obviously, but to consider if it could be aligned for you. Realize what the source of your, your happiness actually is because you still believe it's in something. You still believe it's in security, certainty, a manifestation, a house, consistency, whatever it is. So then over time, you know, you'll find, you'll get reflections and it's not this, it's not that, it's not this, it's not that. If you can accelerate that learning process, that maturation process, and really through clear exercises using your imagination, really get clear to your entire psyche that what you really want and why you do everything you do is to be fulfilled. And then you realize that fulfillment is not the result of any of the things you're currently doing then suddenly you become willing to shift all that attentiveness to the calling to focus on where you're living from, not where you're moving towards. And now everything will be a fresh, unique, flexible expression from your calling, not towards your calling. And then you can suddenly imagine, oh yeah, wait a second, now that I actually prioritize my fulfillment through my calling rather than trying to get somewhere, because I still believe that that will give me happiness, now that I've actually made that shift, now I can understand why someone would do that. Because the happiness is not in the money, the stability, consistency. It's in living from the calling. And so sometimes the design of limiting how much money you make could actually be, or just limiting the consistency or the reliability with which you get a paycheck, could actually be a great design in some cases for some periods of your life for certain deepenings in the calling. Trust life, flow with life so that the challenge and the, the guidance system doesn't have to transfer into physical catalyst, which is usually when stubborn people only begin to pay attention, is when things have become so materialized out of alignment that there's no other way for you than to pay attention or die, right? Or be completely unhappy. So don't go there. I mean, don't postpone it. Like if you notice you have a lack of belief, stop yourself. Don't even continue the dialogue, whatever the dialogue is or the project or the activity. Notice the lack of belief, make it a habit to, if, when you notice the lack of belief, that's the time to stop yourself. That's the time to check in, to pause. It's the best time because that's when it came up. Why have it come up, which is the function of the guidance system, and then shove it back in saying like, oh, thank you for showing it to me. Let's just wait till it arises again and again and again. And w when are you going to pay attention? When the consequences are harsh enough. And so your higher self is compassionate enough to give you all kinds of crap until you pay attention.